doesn't take long. Uh, uh, it doesn't drain immediately. He sat there. Over a year, he was on this boat. Parker guys, were we some some that was a struggle being up there in that gym in a lot of ways. That wasn't even close to that. That's long suffering. But he made a choice uh, not to be discouraged. Esau. Yeah. Esau is a character that God's laid on my heart lately. I'm still looking into that one. I'm still, I'm still asking him about that. But there is something that when I read about Esau, it lights up inside me. Like the Lord is saying, hey, there's something in this for you. But I think Esau is a great story for Mount Mission. Because Esau is a guy who, he had everything. He had opportunity. And he squandered it. And what had to happen? He had to lose it all. And then decide, what am I going to do? What am I going to do with nothing that's been left to me? Just weeping over it with his father saying, you have nothing left to give me? And we carry the, the mistakes of our past through our lives. A lot of us hold on to that forever. And say, I made that one mistake and it is to find who I am today still. Because we've allowed discouragement to take the place of faith in those moments. And so Esau, he lost his birthright. He lost his blessing and his brother. We, we saw what discouragement did to Esau. It turned to anger, didn't it? Where he wanted to kill his brother. His brother had to flee far away just because of that. Hagar and Ishmael. Oh, I have a heart for them too. Imagine you're Hagar, who Sarah says, hey, I can't, I can't give Abraham a child, so please, I want you to do it. She said, okay, I'll do that. She gives him a child, and Sarah has a child, and she's rejected. Imagine you're Ishmael, and your father, you're, you're his only son, and you're, he takes so much joy and, and, and love in you and delight in you, and then suddenly this other child comes along. And they're cast away. Imagine rejection. And that's what a lot of us carry. We feel rejected by people. We feel rejected um, because we're not good enough. Because temptation has come in and has given us the words to make us feel defeated. And discouragement comes. If we define discouragement, it would be a lack of confidence or enthusiasm. So I just don't really feel like doing it anymore. I'm discouraged. But let's look at the word discouragement. In my uh, reading class, we learn to break down words. We're learning roots, prefixes, and suffixes, and how we can recognize those in words and know that they're going to have meaning that deal with those, those in smaller meanings. When we look at the word discouragement, what word is in there? Courage. Do we think about discouragement really being a courage issue? Maybe we should. Discouragement means you no longer have the courage to keep going. Now, courage is usually in the face of what? Fear. Fear is a common thing that, that leads to discouragement. Fear makes us afraid to, to keep going. A girl breaks your heart, guys. I mean, crushes it. Maybe even puts you on blast in front of everybody. We have two routes to go. Most of us, I mean, if we're put on glass, we'll, immediately they're an enemy to us, right? And it will retaliate, and it, it can get ugly. But imagine those heartaches that are silent and no one even knows about. That rejection, or that, where you feel just completely alone and broken in the moment, and no one else understands what you're going through. And you're thinking, I'm not going to be able to do this again. And we put up walls, don't we? We protect our hearts to keep people away. We don't allow people to invest in our lives because we don't want them to disappoint us later. That's fear. And we're afraid because we've been classically conditioned. Even in life science, we talk about the scientific method, which is about solving problems. Uh, Albert Einstein said insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results expecting something to be different and yet we take that into spirituality and we say oh i felt disappointed by god so
So I'm going to turn God away. And I truly believe a lot of us in this room are struggling with that very thing because we have put a blame on God that does not belong to God. God is the only one blameless. Now, some of these issues are ours. I can look back and if, and if I wanted to dwell on it, I could name hundreds of mistakes that I made that I am the blame. Relationships that I have messed up because I didn't handle the way they, were, they should have been. And then I have to focus on reconciliation as opposed to saying, well, it's just easier not to deal with that anymore. We have put blame on God thinking that God has been the error in our scientific method. And we're going to find a way around God. Because we've allowed discouragement to take the place of our faith in Him. Maybe it's lack of hope could be the source of discouragement. Where... Have you ever invested in something so heavily? Um, you put in so much time and work into it. You're, for some reason, I keep thinking of me, yes, I'm not. Those, those guys who are in the gym 24-7, and they're doing the drills, and they're working hard, and they get to play a little bit. Basketball is their life, but it's not the future. You've invested something that heavily, and it's taken. It doesn't pan out. There's a lack of hope we just, we just quit. We give up. I think another issue is we, a lot of us probably don't even acknowledge that there is fear. We don't like to be afraid. It's not a quality that anybody says is a good thing. Fear is natural. And fear is something that will come our way because immediately, when, when the moment happens, when the storm rages, fear comes out of us. But that's not something where we're supposed to set up camp and live in that fear. We're not supposed to set camp and live in discouragement. That's an opportunity where we say, okay, this is an external thing that's happening, so how am I turning to God? So we have to recognize the fear in us, and it is crippling. Um, and if we're slaves to that fear, it's not dealt with. But there is an alternative. The next one, next one, please. Faith and hope are the alternative. When disappointment happens, discouragement does not have to be where we go. And this may be news to some of us. We may think disappointment always is discouragement. But it doesn't have to be. Faith and hope remain. If we look through Hebrews 11, we would see person after person after person who it says they lived by what? faith. And we can look at those, and a lot of them, we can see, wow, there was crazy disappointment in that person's story. Crazy disappointment in that one's. And yet they're seen for their faith. Because they chose a different alternative to discouragement. They chose faith, and they chose hope. Jacob was a great example of, of someone who kept going on. Joseph's a great example, right? This guy who's Everything goes wrong. He does everything right. Joseph's character, everything right. And still he ends up, looks like he's just rejected by God. I know there's people in that room who can relate to that story. That you feel you really have done everything right. And it's not an issue with Joseph that he just wasn't seeing his life correctly. He saw it correctly and he kept his faith because he realized that. Ah, God is bigger than this. In every situation, God is bigger than this. And he persevered. Noah, just remaining faithful. I can imagine him a year anniversary, and he's still on that boat. Just like, what, two weeks away from, from finally getting landed? But a year's gone by. Noah still sees a lot of water. Let the Lord just get me off this boat, please. And yet, God sends him the rain. The opposite of fear is empowerment. Uh, John 10.10. 10. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. This is the promise. This is the promise. Now, you may have a hang-up with the word promise. 
You may have heard that word so many times in your life that, okay, great, another promise. So much of those. There's the cynicism, right? <laughs> promise? Okay, you're yeah, right. I've been promised before. This is God's promise. God is not faulty. God is not wrong. God is always good. And if you can't believe God is good, then his promises won't matter to you. If you don't think he really has your best interest at heart, his promises will not matter to you. So do you struggle with accepting God's promises? Maybe go back to that heart issue and say, do I really believe that God is good? In all things, do I believe that God is good? No matter how great the disappointment, God is good. Because if you do, then you can start to believe in what those promises are. And his promise is to give us a life to the full. We are empowered. God would not give us a, a life to the full without getting us there. He's saying everything is already within you. When I help my son with his social studies homework, and, and I'm thinking, oh yeah, these words are hard. But you can do it. I know you can. And I see his face, and he's battling. Because he has two voices in his head. Daddy's telling me I can do it. But this is scary. I've never seen anything like this before. I don't know how I can do this. This is such a great challenge. But Daddy tells me I can do it. Our Daddy tells us we can do it. Our Heavenly Father says, I am good. And I've got you. <coughs> we have courage, and that's what he gives us. That's what he gives us to equip us. When fear comes up, that makes us say, oh, you should give up. You should be discouraged. Says, no, no, no. Look in your hand, <coughs> and you see the staff. God says, look in your hand, and the power is yours. Through what my son has done for you, the power is yours. Do not listen to those other voices. Those voices make promises that will disappoint you, but mine will not. Last week, Mr. Beery uh, preached about um, courage. You ever notice preachers kind of stick to the same themes a lot? They do it different, life, different ways. I know for Mr. Beery, one of his is, is always courage. And I think that's because God is working in him to make him one of the most courageous men. Because he sees something that he wants to bring out of him to bless others. But in his sermon about courage last week, he talked about excuses people make because they don't have the courage. Jeremiah said, I'm too young. I can't do that. Abraham said, I'm too old. I can't have a kid. I can't have many nations. Timothy said, I'm too timid. Moses said, I'm too ungifted. I don't have what it takes. The disciples was where he got me. As soon as he said that one, I got choked up because the Holy Spirit said, bingo, that's your button right there. Why am I afraid to share God? Because I don't know enough. I'm just a fisherman. I don't know enough of the Bible. I don't, I don't have answers to battle um, Bill and I, you know, Discussion about creationism and all that. I don't have all the information. So I don't even engage. One, I, I left Facebook, and one reason is uh, it, how long has it been since the election? It's still a very real, very raw subject. And I, I just hear people just hating toward each other over something that they're passionate about, and I understand that. But you know what, I don't engage in those conversations. And it's, it's out of fear. It's because I don't want to get into a conversation and look like I'm, I'm, I'm an ignorant. I don't want to be exposed in that way. So I don't even engage in what the Lord might have for someone to know. And I'm not talking about throwing mud with them. I'm not talking about getting up there. Um, talk, my dad was talking about um, protesting. And there's so many different ways to protest. Uh, and I think Christians are in a, a place where we have to be careful because it's a, a nation where the loudest people get hurt, right? And we're told to not be loud. We're told to not be ways. It can be very difficult. 
for that. Um, but we shouldn't be afraid to stand up for what we believe. We shouldn't be afraid to say to my friends who have had abortions and still are pro-choice. I have good friends who believe this. And I, I'm in a position where I know how tense and a button it is. If, if I push that button, what can happen to that friendship? I'm afraid. I don't want to engage because I don't, I don't really know enough into their story either. I don't know a lot of things, and it makes me timid. And so I back away, and I immediately say, I, I can't have this discussion. I can't be the one. Let someone who knows more about this subject do the talking. And there is wisdom in that, guys. Because a lot of us talk and have no idea what we're talking about. And everybody knows it. But when the Holy Spirit is leading, that's him saying, I've got this. Not you, I've got this. So step out in faith. Disappointment is inevitable, but discouragement is not. Believe that to be true. Just because you are disappointed does not mean it has to be.